your stay back I'm the lyrical gangster Big up the crew in the area Still love you like that No, no, we don't die Yes, we multiply Anyone press me here The fire is sing That's life to the max right there, isn't that right? Man, we get old, we get all being adult-like, and we forget that's what we are called to be right there, just dancing and like no one's looking, you know what I mean, that it's just us. And this, uh, the start of this year, we just said, you know, we, we got to remember that as we're just, uh, we're in the freshness and we're into this, uh, the newness of the year. You know, we do goals, resolutions, all that stuff. Sometimes we just need to remember that God has made us to live a life to the max. He wants us to live a life that's blessed. He wants us to live a life with victory. He wants us to flourish. And he wants us to know that, uh, th you know, this place down here is not your home. But when you are there, you are to live it with abundance. And so that's what we've been talking about, living to the max. That's this series. We only have four parts. We're in the second part. Last week, we ended from Psalm 112 with the idea in verse 10, if you remember, that the desires of the wicked shall perish. And we said, okay, he gave us nine verses that said, man, this is what a blessed person looks like, the blueprint. And we said, that's what I want. I want to I want to know that. I want to feel that. I want my children to, to, to live a mighty life. I want to be up here with my child. And I want to say yes to the church and yes to God about being a, a, a father and a, and a husband and a mother and a wife who lives and, and seeks after God. And I want my child, the generations ahead, to be mighty. And we said, that's what I want. Psalm 112 was clear that those who start with praise, those who start with a fear of God can consider themselves to be, to, to be living a life that's blessed. But at times, what do we do? We get bogged down, don't we? We get bogged down because we say, yes, amen, pastor, you do your pastor thing and tell me that I'm, I can live a blessed life. You, you tell me that. But here's what happens. I leave here on Sunday, go home, and I go to work on Monday, and I feel bogged down already. I feel like I'm losing. It feels as though I'm not feeling that blessing that you're talking about. It feels that although I am faithful, Pastor, although I'm obedient and I'm loving God, that victory just doesn't seem to be happening. And I believe that each one of us are looking for victory, no matter what we're in. Right now, and you can you can say I don't believe in God, and, and I'm just here for a baby dedication, or I'm here because you know someone invited me, and the food's good at lunch. I, you may say that. Guess what? I'll still tell you that you are looking for victory in an area of your life, because it is inside us to want to win. It is inside us to not be losers. Each one of us are looking for victory. We want to be winning. You remember Charlie Sheen came all over the TV? And he's, I mean, that watching, and all of us wanted to see the train wreck, and, and so we turned on 60 Minutes or whatever it was. And Charlie, in all of his wisdom, did that interview, and all he kept saying was winning, right? And we're like, at times we're freaked out by it, at, 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 you know, but what do we remember from it? What trended from that? What was all over social media? All the only thing that everybody kept saying was winning, right? Blah, blah, blah. Winning, blah, blah, blah. Winning. And I'm thinking, man, it's amazing because there's this exciting proclamation that the world makes in their losing. Do you hear me? There's this exciting, loud, media-driven social-driven proclamation that the world will make 
in their losing that they're winning. And yet believers lack this same proclamation in our victory. Did you hear that? Now, before you say, how dare you use Charlie Sheen as a sermon illustration, now you know, as misguided as Charlie was and is, his phrase encapsulates how we as believers should view our spiritual journeys. That regardless of what you are in and what you are doing and where you are at, guess what? You are winning. Regardless of what it looks like at this point in time, each one of us who call ourselves believers and children of God, not creation of God. We are all creation, and so are the people out there, and so are the people in here, and so are the people over in that place and this place. We're all creation. We are all not children. Those who have called on the name of Jesus and said, I believe you are the way, are those who are ch children of God. Those are the people. We are the people who are winning. But regardless of what it looks like, Sometimes we get caught hoping for just momentum, don't we? Don't we feel like we're up and down? It's just, you know, are you ever watching a sporting event and you're thinking, man, this is awesome. I tell you, I mean, the, the, today, in just a little while, these two teams will get together, the Broncos and the Patriots, and, and it'll be great and everything else. Do you remember their, their first uh, game? It was 24 to nothing at halftime. Bronco fans around the world are posting things and all over Twitter, and this is the year for Manning and everything else. And what happened in the second half? Every, most of you went to bed, and I did too. I woke up in the morning saying, what? The Patriots came back and beat them, 24 to nothing? And what we cry is the, just the momentum. And you know what we have gone to just believe? That that's how our, our spiritual lives are. That they're up and down, and we work with momentum. When things are going great, things are, praise the Lord. We have this great momentum, and we're, we're having victory. And when things are going down, we feel like we're losing. We get caught at times trying to find ways to change the momentum of our lives. And I want to tell you today, when we have a relationship with Christ, I believe there's no such thing as momentum. You hearing me today? We get caught in the lie of saying that, man, things have got to be better and good for my life for, for me to know that I, I'm winning with Christ. You are winning at your most when you are struggling. Do you remember in Scripture where he says, when we are weak, he is strong? You ever hear that superstar? And yes, we're getting close to the sports, the big stuff, so I'm just going to use these. But you ever hear that superstar that says at the end of a big win, similar to like Blake Freeland this last week, you know, Killer Bees won the dodgeball tournament. We entered, Yeah, you know. Where you at, Killer Bees? You in here? All right. Two of you are at church, you losers. Um, that's how you get you win, you feel big headed, and yep, see, that's how it all works, you know. Anyways, they won. We interviewed Blake Freeland, and you know, sound, he sounded so much like the, that superstar at the end of the game. I always had the, the confidence and security that we were going to win. I knew we had the skills and we had all the talent. We had practiced hard. And we did all the things that were needed to win. Sounds like the superstar, doesn't it, at the end? But you know, it sounds like us, it should about our spiritual journey. We have all the talent. We have all the passion. We've already practiced hard. We're already in the midst of this. We already knew we were going to win. No matter what we were going through and what journey we're, part of that journey we're in right now, I knew that we would be fine. And I knew that we were going to win. And this is what living in the knowledge and victory of Jesus Christ looks like. Do you hear me? When you live in the victory and the knowledge of who Jesus is and you just can't make up your own Jesus, you have to go to God's word and say, this is who Jesus is. And if you, if you haven't yet, go to John, open up John, and it says, in the beginning, here he is, and let's start talking about it. Don't take my word, don't take anybody else's, Billy you know, Graham's, Jimmy Swaggart's, all these, you know, whatever, all the voices who will tell you what to believe. Here's what I'm just saying. Just If you don't know living in the knowledge and victory of Jesus Christ, then open up John Go into your room and lock the door and just read it for yourself. When you come out, then I'll ask you. But when we live in that, that's where victory comes from. We have the victory to overcome anything the enemy would send our way. But do we really celebrate 
And do we really hang on to that victory regardless of our circumstance? Well, Scripture, we know, fills us with reminders that we are winners. Do you know that? That Scripture fills us with these ideas that you are, are, listen, whatever you're going through, you are a winner, that you are a conqueror, that everything's fine, because guess what? In the end, you can already see the end of the school board, if you'd like. We have already won. We have guaranteed victory. It fills us with that. And if you're following along in, in our reading plan, which I'm praying that you are praying our church is following along in the reading plan, because right now the reading plan is telling you about victory. It's telling you in those two minutes, literally, that it takes you in the morning to open up your smartphone and that email that says, reminder, read this. It's telling you about victory in your life, victory in your relationships, victory in your workplace, victory in everything that you're going through, because Scripture's filled with it. But what are the keys? If you're like me, I'm like you, and we're all like, yes, good, victory, awesome, cool, great. What are the keys, though? What are the keys to victory? What are the key? What does it look like to have guaranteed victory? What does God's holy word say about guaranteed victory? Get out your bulletins. They are done in all of their wonder. All right, look at these these uh, these points. Follow along with me again. I won't say point one. Okay, I'm just going to say follow with me. If you write them down, you will remember them. I will say a personal note, something that breaks my heart, all right? Breaks my heart when these are filled out. It actually breaks Carrie's heart more than my heart, but it does break my heart too. Um, These are filled out, and they're left here. I'm not getting on you. Yes, I am, but here's the deal. I want you to fill these out and take them with you. Put them in your car. Throw them on the dash so that one day you'll, you'll see, what is that trash? And you'll pick it up, and you'll be like, wow a key to victory right here, you know, and you didn't throw them away. Please fill them out, put them in your Bibles, take them with you, workplace, whatever they are, okay? Today, we are writing some down. We are looking at keys to victory. Scream them, whatever you want. But after today, you should profess these keys to victory. Guaranteed victory, what does it mean? It means knowing that God is leading the charge that God is ahead of us, that he's gone a, a, ahead, that we, if I, we're going to be winning in this circumstance, guess what? He's already gone ahead, and he's leading the processional. He's leading the victory. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be to God who always, always, always leads us. He always leads us in triumph in Christ. Do you hear those two? Someone say always in here. See, what always means is that it doesn't leave out anything that you are struggling with right now. It doesn't leave that thing out. You said always. So if you said always, it throws that thing that you leave out into this thing where you said always. He always leads us in triumph. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. You see, the imagery of this verse is from a Roman processional or a Roman parade. They would have these parades, and the general would lead them on, and the soldiers would lead with them. And you know who was with them? The captives were with them. And they would throw this incense into the sky as a fragrance of victory. And these soldiers were so pumped, and they were so dynamic and excited because they knew their general was leading them in victory. They knew who was leading them, where the charge was. They knew that triumph was there. And if you believe that, aren't we right there? And the things that you struggled with, the things that you dealt with are right there. They're the captives and they're the, the, the enemies. And you're like, yes, you're going to, yeah, you're, I'm going to remember you because I beat you and I had triumph over you. And you're going to be right here as I walk in this triumph right here in this processional. Because I know who's leading us. Victory. Victory is knowing who you are following, right? Isn't victory knowing who you are following and remembering the ways of the general? Knowing the ways of the Lord, our commanding officer, that he's the one who brought us through? We've got to know who leads the charge. Second one, guaranteed victory means believing God is working on a harvest for those who are doing good. I will not leave the second part out. Believing God is working on a harvest. We will just say that in churches. 
Pastors will get up to make you feel good, regardless of how you live, and regardless of how you act, and regardless of how you witness, and how, regardless of how much you testify. Guess what? The harvest is for everybody. And that's not what we read. We, re- re- we read that the harvest is for those who are doing good. Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if, if we do not lose heart. You're planting seeds everywhere and you're doing things and you're thinking, yes, it's going to grow and you don't see it growing. You don't see it working. And some of us keep working hard on it. Some of us, as Andrew told me earlier, some of us keep watering the grass because we know something's going to come of it because we believe that God is with it. And some of us just say, no, I'm going to water it for one day. If it doesn't come up, I'm out of here. I'm on to the next belief. Or I'm on to the next thing that's in my workplace that they said we can, you know, trust in. Galatians 6, 9 says we can't grow weary, that it's going to happen. And when it happens, it's going to be glorious, all right? It is. My little boy Trey is potty training, all right? And uh, he's getting the pee-pee down. This is really awesome. And it's it's good to get the pee-pee down, but you know, as a mothers and fathers, when, when you have the other thing, all right, when, when you can get to the other thing, it's a big deal. So the other night, we told him, man, we will take you to Target. You can pick out a toy if you will just poop, all right? That's all, that's all we want, you know? And so Chris is like, this is a great idea. It was her idea. This is a great idea because when he goes into the toy section of Target, he always has to poop. I'm always changing his diaper. So let's it's like 9 o'clock. It's 8.45 at night. We're in Target, all right? There's nobody else in the toy section other than weird people, you know? And so we're, we're like there, and, you know, Trey's like going around, and, you know, and he begins to, you know, do the whole walking on his tiptoes. And we knew it wasn't pee, and because it hasn't been the poop in a while. And so we're like, here we go. This is the moment. This is it. We've been trying. We've been making plans. We've been trying everything we can, and here it is. So I ran him to the bathroom, and he sat on it. Two seconds. No, got off. And I'm like oh, this is a terrible idea. I hate this, you know. Went back to the toy section again, and he's walking pigeon-toed now. This is just terrible, all right? Christy's like, it's going to happen. I'm taking a minute. So she chased. This is serious. It's all our whole family event. This is amazing. Ty's, Ty's like, you can do it. Get it. Because Ty knows if he can poop, he'll get a toy, and it's just great, you know. So, uh, you know, she takes him to the bathroom, sits him down. He won't do it. She's like, no, you're going to poop. I mean, you ever been in none of that pressure, you know? She's like sitting in there, and he's like, mm. No, no, hops down. He's like in the deal, dancing around, you know, comes out. And I'm like, did it happen? And he's like, no, no. And we're like ticked by now. You know, we're like, you know, this is tough. So we're like, all right, let's just go home. So we go home and uh, we're there. We're like, we, 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 we've lost this. I mean, we, we knew this was going to work, you know. More poop is on our way, you know. And so uh, he's in the living room and, and we let him play for just a minute. And this, this time it gets real, you know. He goes full hand to the front, full, full hand to the back. And he looks at us slowly. <laughs> and we're both sitting on our living room couch, and we're thinking, this is the moment. Christy jumps up. She's like, get, get to the bathroom. Runs him to the bathroom, you know, through, and he sits down, and something of manly nature that you <laughs> would not believe had happened. And he comes running out, Daddy! You know, I pooped and all this stuff, and been pooping great ever since. And, and so I'm sitting here thinking, you know, <laughs> this is terrible. That's, that's, I wrote this in. But I'm sitting here thinking that, that as, as parents, even in a moment like that, you, we, we just want to give up at times. And we just want to say, just go and crap everywhere. We don't care. <laughs> you, you know, and, and you, can't, you can't grow weary, can you, for the victory. And I'm telling you, you would think that, that we all found gold in our bathroom, you know. <laughs> Uh, we're all doing the dance and everything, and Trey, Ty's dancing everywhere, and we're thinking, yes, and you, and if you're a parent, if you're, sorry, youth, you're like, gross, eh? but if you're a parent, you are like going, I know what that's like, and I know what that, you know, I, I couldn't resist that illustration, but the truth is, the truth is that there is blessing and treasure for those who do not quit, for those who do not grow weary. He says there is harvest for those if you, if you do not lose heart, if you don't say, Jesus, whatever, I'm going to scrap this and go on to the next belief, your heart was lost. He's saying don't lose heart, and, and the harvest is on its way. Thirdly, guaranteed victory means understanding 
Understanding you are a work in progress. Understanding that you are a work in progress. Philippians 1.6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Guess what? None of us has arrived. None of us has arrived. The person with the Bible sitting next to you, thumbing through and knowing all the verses, has not arrived. The person who's sitting by himself and they just came in and they're just like downtrodden with life, they have not arrived. We all are in a work together. Because God, who has begun a good work in us, he's going to complete that work. Not only just us understanding that, but having a deep, unequivocal belief that God is up to something in our life. You ever just said that, you're going through something, and you can just say, God's up to something. If you'll just say that, if you'll remember this phrase today, God is up to something. He's up to something. You know what what he's up to is that the work he began in you, he is working to completion. And when we have, when we believe in victory in our lives and we believe that, you know, that man, I am, I am obedient to God and it doesn't look like victory right now, but I know that he is working up something. Do you know the power in that phrase? Do you understand the power, the bullets in that gun? Do you understand the grenade in your hand? Do you understand the bazooka on your shoulder when you can say that God is up to something in your life? It's powerful. It's amazing to know that there is someone in our life who has begun a work in us and is bringing it to completion. Jim Pierce, he's suddenly become our resident jog trainer at SCC, right? And he's talking about, man, make the commitment. You can get in shape. You can do this. Well, he, you know, he, you know he got in work to, or worked with people, serious impact on several of us, not me really, but several, no, I'm kidding, several people here at SEC, some would say, man, he is my John Wayne. He is so just, I love him. You know, he's my hero. Well, namely, Christy Mueller, who celebrated finally running her first 5K just at the beginning of this year. That's right. Yeah, give her a hand. Christy didn't just wake up one morning and just say, I think I'm going to just do a 5K and feel good about it. No, she was inspired. And not only that, but she had someone who was running by her side. She had someone with a message that said, you can finish. This is going to be a great completion. And at the, begin- in- at the beginning of this year, guess who completed that 5K with the one who stood beside her and said, you can do it. We all need our picture, don't we? We all need our picture with that smile on our face and our fist held high with the Lord Jesus next to us saying, I was telling you all along that we're going to make it. And I know you were tired and I know there was pain and I know there was struggle and I know your friends told you that you could not do it. You can't make it. I tried that once. I tried that, that whole spiritual thing once. Yeah, you can't do it. And Jesus said, no, come on, keep running. Don't stop. And we all need our picture, don't we? God is at work in you. And there's going to be pain. But we know there's victory, don't we? Amen? A couple more. Stay with me. Last two. Guaranteeing victory means with Christ. With Christ, we are always winning the fight. With Christ, we are always winning the fight. Romans 8, 37 tells us, yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I want you to hear something because my seminary grad brother, who I drove 24 hours in the car with just just two days ago, as we're talking about this stuff, I asked him, I said, point four, I want you to help me with point four. Because I get to Romans 8, 37, and for those of you who don't know, and you might leave it, excuse me, you might leave the church after this. I'm an elementary education uh, grad, so I don't have a seminary grad. So anytime I'm around somebody with a seminary grad, like, you know, Joffrey or my brother Joffrey or Mark or somebody, I, like, try to pick their, you know, brain for free. I don't want to pay the money. So I'm like, you know, hey, hey what, do you, what, what do you think? What do you think about this? And I, and I told him, Romans 8, 37, I said, this says that we are more than conquerors through Jesus who loved us. We're more than conquerors. What do you say, Gordon Conwell? I wanted to know, what, did you, what do you say about it? And, you know, and his voice is clear to his throat. Like, well, uh, you know, I, you know I, yeah, I, maybe, I, you say, well, maybe it's this. He said, you know, with Jesus, 
we're more than conquerors. <laughs> he didn't have anything for me because you don't have anything either and I don't have anything because the wonder of this is greater than we can understand because the only thing we understand is what to be a conqueror is. You ever play King of the Hill when you were younger and you get on top of the hill and everybody's trying and you knock someone down and that feeling of being the conqueror on the hill, you're standing there, someone else comes up, you punt them down, they're bleeding, you know, and you're like, man, blood everywhere. And you're like, yeah, I'm the conqueror because we know what that word re means, right? But then we open up to Romans 8, 37 and in all of our, you know, glory and all of our understanding, we're like, man, what, is, what does that mean? To be, I mean, you're a con. We know that, but to be more than a conquered, how about this? Just chew on that for a little while. Chew on that. Whatever you got right now, whatever you 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 are going through, chew on that. I can't fully wrap my mind around that. That whatever we've gone through, whatever we think it is, conquering is on a whole nother scale with Jesus. And there's power in that. When we have connection, and my brother wanted me to make sure I made this clear. And I said, I will. When we have connection to the victory that Christ accomplished through the cross, we are always winning. It's not by our own. He said, make it clear. Please, make this clear. It's not by our own that we are conquerors. And I know some of you work harder than others. Some of you have been through more than others. Some of you feel like, no. I did this. And what we're saying is, no, you did not. That it was through Jesus Christ that you were made to be a conqueror. And we share in his victory. We share in what happened on the cross. Finally, our guaranteed victory means we have victory over sin. And we have the opportunity to help those who are around us. The victory means that we are winning and fighting fighting and winning over the sin that is in our lives. That it's not taking over you. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58 says this, But thanks be to God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. That you have victory over your sin. That the wages of sin is death, right? But with Christ, you have victory over sin that sin in your life. You have victory over that death. Whatever you feel like is on you spiritually. I know there's other things that are tangible that are on us, but this spiritual weight on you that is the sin in your life, whatever you feel like is crushing on you, guess what? You have victory over that through our Lord Jesus. He says, so my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Your strength and your fight and your, willing, your unwillingness to be moved by anything you're going through is what people see. And when they do that, they wonder how you have that victory. And it's a great opportunity to help those who are around us. So yes, we have victory already in place. And we need to have the confidence for that. That's what I'm saying as a pastor today. And that's what I'm hoping you will say to me someday. Whether you, are, you just come up and you're like, you know, you don't look like you have victory today. Or elders, when we, I come and sit in a meeting and you say, Pastor, are you living in the victory of Jesus Christ? I'm going to say to you, and I want you to say to me, that we have, we have victory in Jesus. If you grew up in the older church like I did, you know that was an old school jam, right? Victory in Jesus my Savior forever. And I sat in the back coloring and doing whatever, and I, I would hear it, and I still to this day remember that. I'm nicer to Jameson. I don't tell him we have to do that hymn, but that song tells it all, that we do have that victory. For those that don't want the old school reference, I brought you a new school one too, all right? This video should tell you who we are and the victory we have. Check this out. Will you fight? Will you fight? No! We will run! And we will live! Shame on you! This could be the greatest night of our lives. But you're gonna let it be the worst. And I guarantee a week won't go by in your life. You won't regret walking out, letting them get the best of you. Well, I'm not going home.
We've got too far! And I'm gonna stay right here and fight for this lost cause. A day may come when the courage of men fails, but it is not this day. The line must be drawn here, this far, no farther. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. You're gonna work harder than you ever worked before. But that's fine, we'll just get tougher with it. If a person grits his teeth and shows real determination, Failure is not an option. That's how winning is done. Believe me when I say we can break this army here. And win just one for the Gipper. But I say to you, what every warrior has known since the beginning of time, you've got to get mad. I mean plum mad dog mean. If you would be free men, then you must fight to fulfill that promise. Let us cut out their living guts one inch at a time. And they will know what we can do. <laughs> Let no man forget how menacing we are. We are lions. You're like a big bear, man. This is your time. Seize the day. Never surrender. Victory or death. Patch the Chicago. Who's with me? Clap. Clap. Don't let him die. Clap. All right, let's fly. I'm gentlemen in England, now I bet. Shall we? No, my name is the Lord. Would I tell our enemies that they may take our lives? But they'll never take our Independence Day! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Do you feel that type of victory? That's what I'm talking about. Let's pray then off of that. <laughs> God, thank you so much. Thank you so much that we read in Scripture that we are more than conquerors. That we stand in the rain, God, with our hands held high, with it falling down on our faces and a grin on our face knowing that we have victory. God, thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ, that it says through him we are more than conquerors. I pray that on each and every one of us today, God, that we'll know that this week moving forward, and that we will be drawn to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. And you know